Hey guys, it's Matt here from The Bullet Call. And today, we had another disappointing day for CCIV. So let's get right into the video. But before we get into the video, guys, if you guys can just go quickly take 10 seconds out of your day, go down below, click that like and subscribe button, click that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all my latest posts, that would be wonderful. So let's get right back into the video. Alright, so let's take a look at CCIV, the 4-hour charts like we always do on TradingView. Again, we're seeing this trend line not really be very supportive, being kind of falsely there. I'll keep it up just for, you know, just for the fun of it. But it seems like this thing likes to trade just between supply and demand areas. So you want to see it, you know, retest this bottom bar area where it bounced right around uh, 20, the lower 24s, upper 23s is the, like the lowest one it goes about 23.70 ish you want to see a nice bounce if it doesn't if it holds and closes below here we can definitely see that 19 20 dollar level again but I'm, I'm hopeful i think you know with this market being as wild as it is right now and you know inflation numbers not being fantastic that came out this morning you got to be on your toes especially with SPACs. and this thing what fell what was it three and a half percent today and when you're a long-term investor like myself, you don't think about, you know, this, this small... I mean, obviously, you're like, wow, of course, you know, if you sold yesterday, you'd be up a little bit more and you could buy one more share or whatever it is. You can buy two more shares, just buy off the profit you lost today, um, depending on, obviously, how many shares you have or calls or whatever you want to say. But, you know, this is this is what this is, and if you are long term like I am, you don't see anything other than if it goes back to 19, it's a buy level. It's a buy level all the way down to right to here. And I feel like even if it broke this level, I mean, buy it on the way down, buy it on the way back up. I mean, uh, for me personally, under this purple bar is anytime I'll buy. I bought I, somewhere around here. I think almost when it hit this bar, I, I, I you know, I wasn't really paying attention and I bought somewhere. In March, I think it was like here around 20 something dollars, and I really should have gotten out 30, but then I just held and held and held. Or maybe I bought it here after March, yeah, during March, yeah, because March was a rough month. I think I bought somewhere around here and then kind of regretted it because it just went lower. But I, did, I bought more shares around, you know, this 1780 level, I believe. Um, definitely glad I picked some of those up, but uh. You got to think when 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 you see it low it's not it's not a time to panic. Yeah, it could it can be and you I, everyone feels the same way. You're like, "Oh man, what if it goes lower? What if it goes lower?" Well, when you think about the long term, lower is actually just cheaper and better for, you know, what you want. Like let's say the S&P 500 takes a 5% hit in S September. You're like, "Well, wow, that's a great time to buy in." But at the same time, you have no idea what it's going to do until September. So that that's a, a key thing on when you want, why you want to keep investing, especially on days like this, where maybe it's not a great buy area. But if you want to buy a few shares here, or you know, right around 23, that's not a terrible idea. Because we we can totally see this, you know, 20% in one month, 30% in a month. And then if it has a slight, you know, 10% correction, you're really, if you just bought in today and let's just say it goes up 30% from here and you're like, well, I'm going to wait for the next 10% correction, you're really, you're actually going to be, you know, not down money, but you could have made potential money instead of waiting for, you know, the next correction. And I think that's very important for when you're long-term investing, especially in the S&P 500. I've learned and I, you know, learned the hard way. A few months ago, I bought into the S&P 500. I bought in a few shares, like around March when stuff was not not faring faring too well. Around May again, I bought, um, but I haven't picked up any more, you know, VOO uh, S&P 500 shares. Um, I really should have because if you look at, you know, the S&P 500 spy, it's been on a rampage. I believe I bought somewhere around here. I mean, we'll, we'll take a look at the actual uh, ETF I've been looking at, but, you know, somewhere around, I think, 370, I believe that's, that's kind of where I've been, where I bought, 380s, I think, levels where I bought, and obviously, I could have bought more, and I could have extended my, 
gains, and I think that's really imp important for when you think about CCIV. Yes, is it very volatile? You have to understand. If you're long term this, you ha you're you're going to see these minus three three percent days. You're going to see these up ten percent days. Like we're right right here. We were up seven point sixty three percent in four hours, and then it extended its gains even farther. And then we had a nice little run for like a whole week almost. And then you're going to have these weeks where you're going to get absolutely annihilated. And you have to understand that this is the game that you're playing. You're, you're playing the, it's, it has a potential of going up 15% in a day, or it can drop, you know, 6% and then another 5% and day after day of just falling and falling. It, it's very volatile. You gotta be, you have to understand that. But I mean, that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. You know, another disappointing day. Is it really disappointing? Sure. But for the long term, it just means a better buying opportunity. Personally, I'm not buying here. If I do see it at the $20 level, I will probably have to, you know, crack open the piggy bank and buy more shares. I mean, I'm I'm long term this. I, I it's either a boom or a bust right here. You know, we, you, when you think about it, it's got it has a future, but if it's at, if it's just not at the right place and not at the right time, you're you're kind of going to get screwed. If someone comes along that's faster or better, it could blow CCIV out of the water. You know, uh, another company I want to take a much di a deeper look at is uh, Fisker. Uh, a family friend told me about Fisker. You know, I've, I've obviously heard of it, but he was telling me that, um, you know, the, the CEO, uh, I think his, uh, obviously I guess his last name is Fisker, has created a car before. So I want to do some more research about that. I'm definitely going to create a video about Fisker and AUPH. I think they're both interesting companies interesting buying opportunities and i want to tell you why i think that so stay tuned for those videos they're going to come up very soon i plan on creating them sometime this week so stay tuned maybe wednesday thursday friday that video will drop uh but yeah that's pretty much it for this video guys i'll see you in the next one peace out